fiber to fabric project is ready now let's have a look so on this cover page over here as you all can see I have used the wool to make this but if you all don't want to do that you can simply cut a fabric a piece of fabric and then paste it on these woolen threads and also I have drawn some of the diagrams but if you all don't want to draw it you all can simply stick the pictures so this was about the cover page now let's go to page number one which is our index page so this is the index now going to page number two that is we start with the wool so here we have taken the wool yielding animals now these animals grow thick coat of hair called as fleece this keeps them warm by trapping air which is a bad conductor of heat then wool is obtained from the hair or fleece of sheep goat yak and other animals so now here I have taken some nine animals and in one or two point I have mentioned about the quality of wool they provide us. So coming to the first that is the sheep. The sheep wool is most common and versatile. Softness varies among breeds of sheep. Second animal is alpaca. The wool it provides is softer. It has a naturally silky feel. Then the Kashmiri coat. It gives us cashmere which is the classic luxury fiber. It is very soft. It is woven into fine shawls called as the pashmina shawls. Then coming to the angora goat. The wool they provide is called mohair. Mohair from angora goat is very soft, silky and shiny. Then the fifth animal is the angora rabbit. Now the wool it provides is extremely soft and silky often combined with other fibers because of its delicate nature. Then the sixth animal is camel. The wool is collected from the soft undercoat. It is lightweight and warm. Then comes llama. Now here it provides us with slightly coarse wool because of the guard fibers now if we don't remove the guard fibers this wool is used for making ropes and rugs and if we remove the guard fibers that is without guard hairs then we can spin it into a yarn then the next animal is musk ox mostly found in northern canada and the greenland area it's a wild animal now it also provides us with soft inner wool called as kiviat then lastly it is yak the wool it provides is most expensive softer than cashmere and warmer than the regular wool so this these were the nine animals which i have taken now going to page number three so india is the seventh largest producer of wool it accounts for nearly two to three percent of the total world wool production now we will see the wool yielding animals in india the state of rajasthan is the largest wool producer now here with the orange sketch pen i have marked the kashmiri goat found in jammu and kashmir then yak found in himachal pradesh camel found in rajasthan and gujarat patanwadi with a purple sketch pen it is found in gujarat bakharwal with a dark green sketch pen it is found in jammu and kashmir then sheep are found in maharashtra madhya pradesh telangana andhra pradesh and karnataka Lohi is found in Rajasthan, Rampur Busher is found in Uttar Pradesh and Himachal Pradesh. Then Nali is found in Rajasthan, Haryana and Punjab. And lastly Marwari is found in Gujarat. You can add in some more variety of goats and sheep over here. So I have taken around 10 of them. Then coming to the wool yielding animals in the world. Now over here the top 5 countries producing wool I have shaded those areas in light yellow color that is uh, number 1 is Australia then China, USA, New Zealand over here and Argentina. Merino sheep in orange color that is in Australia, New Zealand and United Kingdom, Cashmere goat in India, China, Angora goats in yellow color it is in United States, South Africa, Turkey, Australia, Camel, China, Alpaca in South America, Angora rabbit in France, Germany, China, Llama in South America, Vicuna in South America, Muskox in Greenland. So these were the wool producing 
animals. Then coming to page number 4 that is rearing and breeding of sheep. Now sheep are herbivores and eat grass and leaves. Sheep rearers also feed them on a mixture of pulses, corn, jowar, oil cakes and minerals. Now here I have put a cello tape on top of this so that these grains don't fall off. In winters, sheep are kept indoors and fed on leaves, grain and dry fodder. Some sheep are selectively bred with one parent being a sheep of good breed. These sheep grow thick coat of hair on their body which yields good quality wool in large quantities. Once the reared sheep have developed a thick growth of hair, hair is shaved off for getting the wool. This is done during hot weather which enables the sheep to survive without their protective coat of hair. So this was about page number 4. Then coming to page number 5, the processing of fibers into wool. Now step 1 is shearing. Now here as you all have seen we have put a velcro dot. So here we can show that the shearing is fleece of the sheep along with a thin layer of skin is removed. Step number two is carding that the sheared skin with hair is thoroughly washed in the tanks either manually or in machines to remove grease, dust and dirt. Now here I have used a brown color sketch pen to make it little dirty and so that in step number three after the scarring uh, I have taken uh, I have shown a clean cotton over here uh, which undergoes sorting that is uh, step three the hair of different textures are separated and sorted depending upon the fineness, strength, color, crimp, length and elasticity. The best wool is obtained from the shoulders and the back and the poorest quality is obtained from the lower legs. Now coming to step number four here the small fluffy fibers called burrs are picked out from the hair and again they are scarred and dried. Step number five is carding. Carding machine combs the loose wool fibers into sheets. Step number six is dyeing that is fibers are dyed in various colors. Then lastly rolling that is fibers are straightened, combed and rolled into yarn. So longer fibers are made into wool for sweaters and shorter fibers are spun and woven into woolen cloth. So this was about the processing of fibers into wool. Now coming to page number 7 that tells us about the benefits of wool. So it is natural, fire resistant, biodegradable, odor resistant, last longer, hypoallergenic, can absorb dye, wrinkle free, renewable resource forms part of natural carbon cycle. Then coming to page number 8 that is silk. So silk fibers are animal fibers obtained from silk moths. These are the secretions of caterpillars made of protein which hardens on exposure to air and become silk fibers. There are many varieties of silk moths and the silk they yield is different in texture that is coarse, smooth, shiny etc. So types of silk moth. I have taken four types that is mulberry, tassar, airy and muga silk moth. So now over here I have pasted the pictures of the silk they provide but if you get the sample of silk pieces you can paste those over here. So coming to mulberry silk moth, it is the most common silk moth, it feeds on mulberry leaves, it is, the silk is soft, lustrous, elastic and can be dyed in beautiful colors. Then coming to the next, that is the tassar silk moth, the silk it gives is more textured, it is copperish color, cooler, porous and breathable. Now the airy silk is spun from the open ended cocoons, it feeds mainly on the castor leaves. Then the muka silk moth, that is muka silk is golden yellow, shimmering glossy texture, its luster increases with age. So this is about the muka silk moth. Now coming to the life history of silk moth, these silk moth have this life history, that is the female silk moth lays eggs, then the caterpillar or the silkworm hatch out, caterpillar eats leaves and grows bigger and bigger. It spins a cocoon of silk thread around itself. 
inside a cocoon caterpillar grows into pupa which develops into moth and it comes out so this completes the life cycle then coming to page number 9 we are going to see the rearing of silk moth now rearing of silk worms for obtaining silk is called sericulture it is very old occupation in india for obtaining silk moths are reared and their cocoons are collected to get the silk threads now the female silk moth lays hundreds of eggs at a time now these eggs are stored carefully on strips of cloth or paper and sold to silk worm farmers they are warm to suitable temperature for the larvae to hatch out now these larvae called the caterpillars eat day and night and increase enormously in size now after 25 to 30 days they stop eating and spin a cocoon on small racks or twigs provided in the trays so these are the cocoons now spinning may take about a week after which cocoons have to be unraveled then page number 10 tells us the processing of the silk the cocoons are kept under the sun or boiled or exposed to steam this kills the pupa and loosens the silk fibers then reeling the process of taking out threads from the cocoon is called reeling the silk it is done in special machine which unwinds the threads and fibers of silk from cocoon Now silk fibers are then spun into silk threads which are woven into silk cloth by the weavers. Then coming to page number 11 that is about the facts that is soft silk yarn is as strong as a comparable thread of steel about 5500 cocoons are required to produce 1 kg of raw silk. Wool fabric was first produced in ancient Iran. In wool industry, sorters' job is risky as they get infected by bacterium anthrax, causing a fatal blood disease called as the sorters' disease. China leads world in silk production. Silk is used in sutures. Now these are the threads used to stitch wounds and incisions. Silk can be made into a wide range of fabrics from bridal wool to bulletproof waste. Now the woolen clothes keeps us warm than the cotton clothes as they trap air and air being the bad conductor of heat keeps us warm. So this was about the project of fiber to fabric. Do let me know in the comment box about the video. If you like the video, do give a thumbs up, do share the video and don't forget to subscribe my channel for more such videos. Till then this is Amrita Pandey signing out. Happy learning fiber to fabric and happy growing up with your loved ones.